Hi, welcome back. This is Grade 3, Weather and Climate, Lesson 3.1, Analyzing a Year of Data, Part 2. I'm Scientist Kate. For this part of the lesson, you won't need any extra materials, just a curious science brain. Are you ready? Great, let's go. Okay, remember in Part 1, we got all of a full year of data from Creek Island but it was sent to us in line plots. And line plots are really hard to understand and make sense of when you have a lot of them. So we decided we were going to make a bar graph. Do you remember what a bar graph is for? Bar graphs are used to organize data to compare or look for patterns over time. Do you remember doing the activity where I read the story and you counted the number of ripe durians on a tree? Great, I hope you still have that from when we did the activity because you will need this to move forward and make the graph today. All right, we are going to use the data of about the ripe durians to create a graph. And I just wanna take a look at this graph really quick. Have you ever seen a graph like this before? Okay, across the bottom is called the X axis. And the X axis shows us the number of days day one, day two, day three, all the way up to day 10. This axis going up the side here is called the Y axis. And the Y axis has on it the number of durians. So we're going to go across the X axis to find the day, and then we're gonna go up to mark the number of durians. All right, so let's start with day one. Tell me how many durians I need to mark on the bar graph for day one. Yes, we need to mark nine durians. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the X axis across the bottom. We're gonna go to day one, and then we're gonna go all the way up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna stop at the number of durians for that day. And then we're just gonna draw a little bar to represent how many durians are there. Boop, there it is. Do you see it? Does it make sense to you now why we call it a bar graph? Because we use bars that go up to mark a certain number. How far does the bar need to go up for day two? Look at the data. Yeah, it needs to go up to 14. So let's check it out. Boop. There it is. I marked on the bar graph 14 durians on day two. How many durians should we see on the bar graph for day three? Yeah, we should see 10. Point to the screen to where the bar should stop for day three. Are you pointing? All right, let's check your work. Boop. There it is. Did you point to the right spot? Awesome. All right, let's look at day four. How many durians should the bar graph show for day four? Yeah, 16. So point to the screen to show me where the day four bar should stop. All right, ready to check your work? Here it is. Boop. Did you get it right? Awesome. All right, now let's do day five. How many durians do you, uh, should I mark for day five? Yeah, five, five durians on day five. That's funny. All right, ready? Point to the screen to where, how high the bar should go. Ready? Boop. There it is. Day five, five durians. What about day six? How many durians should we see? Yep, three durians. Here we go. Boop. There it is. Day three. I'm sorry, not day three. Day six, three durians. All right, day seven. How many durians should we see? Yeah, six. Point on the screen to where the bar should stop for day seven. Boop. There it is. All right, what about day eight? 10 durians, correct. Point two on the screen where it should stop. Boop. All right, awesome. What about day nine? Yeah, nine durians. Ready? There it is. All right, day 10, the last day, how many durians should I mark on the bar graph? 
That's right. Four durians. Here we go. Awesome. Check this out. We took all of our data and we put it onto a bar graph so we can easily see all of our data and compare it. So which day had the most durians? Yeah, day four. You can easily see that because graphs are really good at helping you make sense of data. All right. What does the height of each bar tell us? You can tell me. The height of each bar tells us how many durians there were for a day. On which day did the big storm happen? Look at the data and see if you can tell when the big storm happened that knocked all the durians off the tree. Which day did you pick? Yeah, it looks like the big storm happened on day five because it went from way up high on day four to down low really quickly on day five. What happened after day six? Yeah, we can see a pattern in the data that after day six, the durian numbers went back up. Awesome. Bar graphs are super useful for keeping track of data over time. As we investigate island weather and think years into the future, we can look at bar graphs that show how temperature and precipitation change throughout the year. Now, for some more practice, let's look at some bar graphs from Shinangia Nature Reserve. Wow, okay, I'm gonna try that word again. Shinangia Nature Reserve, that's in China. Okay, so here's a bar graph from this nature reserve in China. Look across the x-axis on the bottom. Do you see that the months are listed? So we're seeing every single month. And what is this uh, bar graph showing us? Look up the y-axis. Yeah, it's showing us the rainfall in millimeters. So we're seeing a year's worth of rainfall broken down by month. What does this bar graph tell us about the rainfall? Yeah, it looks like there was a lot of rain in May, in June, July, August, maybe not so much on the, in the other months. Now, let's look at this one. Again, across the bottom, do you see that it's showing us the months? And then what is it showing us on the y-axis that goes up and down? Temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, awesome. What does this graph show us about how temperature changes over the year? Look for a pattern and then tell me what you think. Did you happen to notice where the temperature looks like it's the highest? In like July, August, what season is that? Yeah, it's really, really hot there in the summer. What about the temperatures in January and February? Yeah, they're lower. So we know that it's hotter during the summer and cooler during the winter on this nature reserve. Now, the bar for May shows that the average high temperature was 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you see that on the graph over here? It's pointing to the month of May, and it's telling us that the bar goes up to the number 79 for 79 degrees. Do you think that it was 79 degrees every single day of May? Yes or no? Well, let's look at the temperature data for May. Here is the line plot for May. What is the range of temperatures for May's daily high? Do you remember how to find the range? You look for the lowest number up to the highest number. The lowest number is 67 and the highest number is 92. So the range is 67 to 92. Was it 79 degrees every single day? No. It was a lot of different temperatures every day. But do you see where 79 degrees is marked on the line? What do you think average high temperature means? If you had to guess, tell me. Yeah, so the average is kind of like a number that's in the middle. So there are gonna be temperatures that are hotter than 79 that happened, and there's gonna be temperatures that are lower than 79 that happened. But 
79 degrees is a nice middle number that we could take to represent the whole month. Okay, let's look at December. What is the range for December? Tell me. Yeah, the lowest is 38 and the highest is 63. So the range is 38 degrees Fahrenheit to 63 degrees Fahrenheit. What do you think December's temperatures were like in general? Yeah, they were much cooler than the temperatures that we saw during the summer. The average temperature in December is near the middle. Some temperatures are below the average and some temperatures are above it. Does that make sense? It's kind of a nice middle number we can use to represent the whole month. The December bar has a label that says 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Even without that label, we could use the scale on the y-axis to find December's average temperature. So that means even if this number, this 51 degrees, wasn't already labeled for us, we could still figure it out. We would just take, we would just go to the top of the bar and we would follow it over boop, 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 to the side. And we could see that the number was in between 40 and 60. The number 50 is in between 40 and 60. So we would know that that bar is going to about 50 degrees. And it turns out that it's actually 51, which is pretty close. Average temperature for one month summarizes the data into one easy to use number. Why do you think meteorologists use averages when they make a bar graph? Tell me what you think. Yeah, it's much easier to take a general, um, like one number, rather than looking at every single tiny little piece of data. It's really hard for our brains to process that much information. So by taking one number to represent the whole month, we can easily compare all of the months. All right, that's it for lesson 3.1, Analyzing a Year of Data, part two. Great job. You did an awesome job helping me make a bar graph. And I think we really learned some important information that's gonna help us decide about the orangutan reserve ultimately. So I'll see you next time for lesson 3.2. I can't wait, stay curious.